Wind loads and membrane structures form a particularly challenging combination. Because of their curved shapes, their low self weights, the often temporary nature, which means that the anchorages are relatively weak, means that they are very susceptible to wind loads, which can in some cases lead to structural failure. Now in case of this first video, the, the damage was only structural, but we know from the past, for instance at the Picklepop 2014 festival, that high wind loads or a storm can lead to the structural failure of large, larger tents as well, which can lead to the unfortunate loss of human lives. So it's very important to understand and be able to predict the effect wind loads can have on these lightweight membrane structures. Right now we have three main ways of analyzing membrane structures under wind loads, which the first one is approximating the geometry and the resulting load using existing building codes. But since these building codes are usually not created with membrane structures in mind, it will be at best a very rough approximation. And in certain cases, it won't be possible at all as the membrane geometry deviates too much from the set of um, proposed geometries in this building code. In that case, it is possible to run, for instance, computational fluid dynamics, where you simulate the wind flow around this structure using a certain software program such as OpenFOAM or Fluent. But of course, this requires a certain level of expertise since we are dealing with a very specific set of software. You have to make sure that the chosen boundary conditions, the meshing and so on, are appropriate to make sure that the outcome of your simulations is representative for the reality. In addition, it's computationally intensive. In certain cases, you need servers. Now with recent hardware developments, it becomes possible to run these simulations on a regular desktop computer, but it still takes a lot of time. A third option is to run experimental wind tunnel tests. Um, but again, here it does require specialized hardware, not everybody has access to a wind tunnel. But you also need expertise, not only in terms of operating the wind tunnel, but also in scaling down the reality. We are scaling a very large phenomenon, which is the atmospheric boundary layer, down to an area of, of just a couple of meters in section. So you have to make sure that the effects that occur at this very large scale are carried over to the small scale as much as possible. In many cases, this is not entirely possible and you're making some approximations as well. For the presented research, we created at the department a Python library, which runs um, a full analysis of a membrane structure, starting with the foam finding through the CFD analysis in open foam in this case. And then the resulting pressure distribution on the structure is exported to our a numerical solver again, where the structure is then analyzed, including the pre-stress and the load, so as to obtain an accurate deformed geometry. In addition, we can close this loop by using the deformed geometry again as an input for the computational fluid dynamics, and thus updating the pressure field and coming to, after a couple of loops, we tend to come to um, a converged state where the pressure does not and, and the deformation do not change anymore. But because this process is relatively automated, it allows us to conduct parameter studies to better understand the interaction between the wind loads and the structural and the resulting structural behavior and certain design parameters, such as, for instance, the pre-stress. So the question here was, how does the pre-stress in a structure influence the CFD and FSI determined pressure distributions? and of course, the consequential structural behavior. For this, we observed a regular hyperstructure, six by six meter in ground plan, low points one meter above the ground level, high points three meters above the ground level. As material properties, we chose a set of representative material properties, but they are virtual, so they are not derived from a certain material yet. More importantly, of course, are the pre-stress levels. We have observed three cases, and because of because we wanted the geometry to remain constant as we reduced the membrane pre-stress we also reduced the cable tension so this makes sure that the starting geometry is exactly the same 
as boundary conditions for the wind tunnel, we chose an ABL1 boundary layer, which was initially investigated in an empty domain to make sure that it was consistent throughout the domain. Of course, because the initial geometry, the form found geometry is the same for all three cases, the initial results are also the same. So this is just with one computational fluid dynamic simulation and just the results of um, this pressure analysis. So what you can see for the pressure distribution is that with the high point under attack, you get suction at this high point. So it wants to move backward and upward. And as you move more downwind on the structure, you get this large pressure zone, which is a combination of the effect of the pressure pushing down at the top surface and suction occurring at the bottom surface due to the Venturi effect occurring between the ground and the structure which will cause a speed up in the wind and suction at the bottom surface. However, as we increase the iterations and as the deformed geometry is put back into the computational fluid dynamic simulation, we start to see some deviations between the three cases, certainly where as the deformations become larger, the effect of these deformations on their eventual pressure distributions become more notable. Where you, where you can see that the difference between the 3 kN per meter case and the 0.5 kN per meter case is very apparent in the net results here. The same effect can be seen with the low point under attack, obviously. And this conclusion continues towards um, the structural behavior, where the material stresses do still increase or decrease depending on the direction with this looping of um, the analysis. And the same can be said for the deformations. Now, of course, the effect is more, it's less pronounced for the high pre-stress case, where we can just see between step one and step three an increase of one to two millimeters. But for the 0.5 kilonewton per meter case, this increase um, rises up to almost a full centimeter um, between step one and step three. So certainly for high flexibility cases, this FSI process can be very useful. So the created framework allows for an automated CFD analysis, which makes um, the work very easy or relatively easy, let's say. Um, it not only is able to accurately predict pressure distributions just on a rigid structure, uh, for instance, but it also allows the reanalyzing of the deformed geometry to get more accurate predictions of deformations, material stresses, and pressure distributions. And with this framework, we can start to explore even more things. Um, for now, we have just looked at one shape, but there are, of course, a lot of different membrane shapes. Each can respond differently to this uh, analysis. We can also look at material properties, the effect of an external structure, which for instance, for a conical structure introduces additional deformations. And we can start to look at how can we relate our simulation results to, for instance, behavior observed in the wind tunnel results. More specifically, the deformation results obtained by my colleague Arno de Koster. So this, the created framework is basically just a foundation on which we can start really to conduct a lot of investigation uh, investigations to better understand the interaction between wind and membrane structures in the hopes to prevent this kind of catastrophic failures in the future.